Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is a couple of basic geoprocessing functions, some of which I'm sure you know about already, uh, some of which I hopefully will be some things that are new to you. So uh, I have set up in this layer map in this uh, map document here all the layers that I've given to you guys. So I've already set up so all the layers are in here. But what we're going to focus on primarily is going to be the uh, DEM layer. So if you remember way back when we talked about downloading that one third arc second DEM file, this is that file that you get when you download it. I put a, a colorful, uh, colorful ramp on it. If you if you edit your map, it's probably going to be like black and white. You can change the color just by you know opening up the symbology settings by right clicking on it hitting uh, symbology and then you can choose a bunch of different ways to symbolize it with a, say for instance a different color ramp or uh, a bunch of other options here so you know we'll, we'll, we won't go into that necessarily today but it's just a bunch of things you can do um, so the DEM is the is the is the file format that basically allows you to get all the elevation information in terms of topography contours uh, slope analysis, fusion analysis, everything that you need. And so this is, this is one of the more useful uh, data sets that you can get. Um, the way I like to describe the DEM to anyone who's new to this is basically, if I go to, let me just do something really quick. If I zoom into this, this thing here, you see it's just a bunch of pixels basically. Uh, every single pixel is a number. And so if I click on a pixel, you see it gives you a pixel value right there. That number is the spot elevation at that location. So the when I love rasters, I love these DEMs because what it is is billions and billions of spot elevations. My favorite, you know, like that's what you want. You want that level of accuracy because because that's going to give you the the resolution and, and and really cool way to 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 model topography. Um, later in this studio, I'm going to show you how to use a tool called InfraWorks to take this information and build basically the highest possible quality resolution site mesh topography of any site in the world. Because this data you see here, this is as good as it gets basically. Like anything you do after this is a reduction of this data set. Like turning this into a contour plan is a reduction of this raw data. But can you create a model using the raw data with no reduction? And the answer is yes. And the tool is called InfoWorks. And so that's one day, one day later in the semester, I'll show you how to do that. Um, and that's why I was really sad when I couldn't find LiDAR data. Because if I had LiDAR data, you can take this and you can increase the resolution even further and get some really crazy accurate um, topography. So we'll see if we get LiDAR data. Um, through the process of the studio. Anyway, back to the back to the actual process itself here. So the first, obviously, most simple thing that we need to do is to get the actual contour lines from this uh, map here. So uh, what you do is basically you find an area uh, that you want to get contours for. Let's say you want to get the contours for. Uh, let's turn on the road just to kind of get a sense of the area here. Yeah. So maybe of this this inner inner uh, ring, the, ro the roads are a bit light. Let me just make them black so you can use it. I thought where the, uh, where the one of those uh, path ends. On the... You had your cursor by it. Earlier. Let me turn on the trails here. Yeah, up, up right there, yeah. Right there? Where that trail ends. So we can, we can, we can, do, a, we can do this general area right here. So you, you pick the general area that you want to get contours for. Um, I'm going to turn off some other layers so that we don't need to see that. And then basically you go into your geoprocessing tools. Let me just turn off this. So what you do is go to your geoprocessing toolbar. Again, if you don't know where that is, you can just go click on view. Then there's a little geoprocessing uh, box right up there. And then type in contour. Again, this is, uh, this is why uh, earlier in the tutorial, I asked you guys to double check to make sure that your licenses for 3D analysts and spatial analysts um, say yes, because if you don't have that enabled, then these tools 
will not work for you. But it sounds like most of you are able to access that. So both of the options for Contour work exactly the same way. There's a 3D analyst version and there's a spatial analyst version. It doesn't matter which one you use, you can choose either one. I'm just gonna do this, do the one on top. And so basically what you do is in input raster, this first line there, you add in the raster, the DEM that we downloaded. And then in output future class, it automatically uh, wants to save the contours into your local geo database. So every time you create a new ArcGIS profile, it creates a local geo database. And that's the most easily, easy, most readily accessible place. So I just like to leave it there. We'll just call this contour one foot because they're gonna do one foot contours. And then the contour interval, the next line down the list, if you're doing one foot contours, then your under interval, an interval is obviously gonna be one. So you just put one there like that. And then this, this Z factor here is the most important part of this whole process. Um, you're gonna make sure that in order to convert the units from meters to feet, you add in the meters to feet conversion factor because nine times out of 10, a DEM that you download from USGS is going to be in meters. So if you want one foot contours, you need to put the conversion factor, which is 3.28084. And this is a number that you just remember, 3.28084. Um, that's as far as I know in terms of decimal point places in terms of like the actual uh, Z factor. You can do, you can do 3.28. I'm a bit uh, nerdy and I want to get, get those extra decimal points just to get more precision. Um, but that's the conversion factor from meters to feet. And then the last thing you do is you click on this environments button here, and then you move your mouse to this thing called processing extent, and then extent, you click on current display extent. Um, if you don't do this, uh, it's going to cut contours for the entire data set, which may uh, cause your thing to crash if it's a huge thing. So if you click on that, oh, sorry, click on current display extent. There we go. It should populate these numbers as the actual extents of this. And then it'll only cut contours for literally the area that you see on the screen. So then once that's all set up, you just uh, hit the run button at the bottom, like so, and it'll do that for you. So just give it a second, and you'll see the results. So right now everything's in pink. Let me make the color like black. Uh, I'll make them black and 0.5 thickness, like so. And apply. So you can see this is this is the end result. Is you get a very nice detailed contour map of of, of the area that you um, want to contour for. This is, um, if you ask me, for my my opinion, not great. Like these aren't really good contours, and the reason why is because we're using one third arc second DEM. And so like if we actually zoom into like the actual area and let's say you turn on the world imagery yeah. and you actually look at the like the contour lines I, when you actually get to the site scale make no sense right like this this doesn't show the road crowning this doesn't show like any drainage so this these contours really only work at the macro scale like zooming out going big like this and so my hope is that you know when we by the time we get to the site design phase of this project we would have hopefully gotten better data or drone data or something like that that we can use because this is not usable as a site designer. You know, this is, I, I, sometimes, I sometimes see studios use this as their base, um, their, their base contour map. And I, and I think to myself in the back of my head, why are you wasting your time with this meaningless exercise of designing your grading on, on terrain that makes no sense, right? So, but again, at the big scale, at the big scale, zoomed out, maybe this far, it's fine. Um, this process that I showed you with cutting contours works, works for any DEM that you download. So if you, get a, if you have a better quality DEM, then it will provide you with you know, a result that is, is better. But you can see it's, it gives you a nice result overall. Um, one thing that sometimes I do like to do is, especially if you're working at a large scale, you don't always need to have, I'll say, 
all the detail, like sometimes you see like weird, weird like things like that, like where there's like small little uh, random contours here and there. And um, this, this is especially the case when you're dealing with, I would say, um, uh, higher resolution DEMs. So uh, what I like to do is I like to use a tool called uh, Focal Statistics. So I'll show you what that does. So I'm gonna zoom back to this general area that we cut the contours and I'm gonna turn off, turn off these contours and then go to geoprocessing um, and then search for a tool called Focal Statistics. So if you find Focal, focal Statistics, Focal Statistics. Um, it's a tool that basically uh, kind of takes the DEM file and it doesn't like reduce the complexity necessarily, but it like smooths it out so that any like weird nooks or weird um, imperfections uh, get cleaned up. So uh, what we'll do in here is basically in an input raster, you put in the, the same DEM that you uh, and we downloaded then output raster it doesn't matter we'll call this one just dm i like to use fs because for focal statistics so i just remember that i use that and use a call give it a name i don't know zero or one um and so then you basically leave everything else the same like rectangle three three uh, in this case i will go to environments and i will also do processing extent to be uh, same as current display extent, like so. So it's going to do a little process just of this area that you see on the screen. So I hit run. And you see basically it creates a new uh, uh, raster file. It's just of the area that we, we, we downloaded, or we, we, we uh, worked in. Then let's cut contours from this. So go back, go back. Type in contour one more time. Do the same exact contour process, but with this new DEM that you, you created. And uh, we'll, just, we'll just leave this as contour DEM at this one. Again, contour interval do one. Z factor is 3.28084. In this case, because uh, we know the extent of this data is only this big, it doesn't really matter if in environments you set that to be current display extent or if you ignore it because the data is only on this square. So in this case, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna hit front. So one, one uh, key technique to remember whenever you are exporting or working uh, with output features that's gonna save to your GA database is that the file name cannot have spaces. Um, so instead of using spaces, use the underscore. So this is, a, this is the result of the focal statistics process. Let me change the color to like a, a red and make that like 0.5. Let's compare that to the other one we made. Just a second, if you zoom in, you see that if I, for instance, turn off this and compare it to, the, to, the, to that, in some areas it smoothed it out, in other areas, uh, let me see if I can find a, a weird area here, like right here, like you can see how this contour line is really jaggy here in the, the focus statistic versions. Eh. It's a little bit better. Again, like the, the, the full impact of this tool isn't going to be that noticeable in this particular data set just because of the resolution of the data. But if you're dealing with, let's say, like a really detailed data set um, with a lot of, of uh, let's say, a messy uh, topography, the focus statistics is a really handy tool to basically smooth it out. I mean, you can kind of, I mean, it's hard to tell because the data is not very high res, but the, the end result is, is much smoother um, in the end. 
So anyway, that's that tool. Uh, I don't think I've I, I don't think I've sold the usefulness of bulk statistics with this particular example, but trust me, if we end up working with higher resolution uh, uh, data sets, you will you will understand the, the, the usefulness of that. Um, so the next tool that we're going to look at after that is the Hillshade. So Hillshade is a uh, a pretty simple tool to use. Let's let's just work within this general area here as well, uh, because there is a a method of of topographic representation that I think is very effective that is not used that often. A lot of times in in studios, like when we or projects, student projects, when they're trying to represent topography, they just show contour lines. Um, but typically, that if I if I turn on contour lines and I, I turn off everything else, I know I know it's because it's really dense here. But this is not the most easily understood representation of topography at a glance. Um, so I'll show you a version of this that I of how it's basically create a, a, a very easy to understand topographic map because the reason why is again when you're creating your graphics you're creating your maps your goal is to not give the viewer a headache your goal is to make people look at your your information and just know what they're looking at instantaneously if they have to sit there and squint you've wasted their time and you wasted your own time because because they're spending too much effort trying to understand what's going on and this is very much the case especially with things like terrain and, and contours so here's 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 the process so basically what we're going to do is we're going to let's turn on the this this thing here again and we're going to go to the geoprocessing tab type in hill shade So I type in Hillshade and the first option, there's two options here. There's Hillshade and Spatial Analyst. So type in Hillshade. And in input raster, we can put in the, the, this one here, right? The USGS 13, whatever. The output raster is just gonna be whatever. I'm just gonna leave it in this location for now. So it gives you a bunch of options in terms of azimuth, altitude, and Z factor. Um, I like to leave the default settings um, as is. Uh, to start with and kind of see what the result looks like first before I do anything else. So, um, and I'm, I'm going to do it for a bigger area. Let's do it for the entire, let's turn on the River Region Trail Network and let's try to capture the majority of this area. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm also going to create a bookmark so that I can go back to it. So just create a bookmark called RRT for River, River Region Trails. I'll save that. So now we have a bookmark. So let's do this, this area here. Go to environments, extent, current display extent, and then just run and see what it looks like. So that is really intense. So we can we can adjust it to to be a little bit less intense. Right now this is this is basically taking that hill shade and it, it's being a, making a, giving a very aggressive, aggressive result. So what we can do is we can, you can do everything the same thing. We'll, we'll, in the output raster, we'll call that hill shade two. So basically, uh, basically I didn't close the hill shade geoprocessing window. I just left it open. So if I add a two after the, after the output raster format, you can basically set it to basically create a new one. And in Z factor here, let's reduce the intensity by like half. Let's type in 0.5, like so, and see if that provides us with a better result. And again, everything else that we set, because we didn't close this window, the extent and everything else is already set in place. So I'm just going to run this again and see if it gives us a more subtle result. That's still pretty intense. Let's compare it with. Let's 
try it one more time. Let's do L shade three. Uh, let's uh, point five, and then in altitude, let's change that to be something like. Sixty, because essentially what we're doing is forty-five degrees. This is the angle of the sun. Sixty. So the lower it is, the more dramatic the shadow is. The higher it is, hopefully the less dramatic. So I'm, gonna, I'm just changing this to sixty. Let's just see. Again, I don't have any expectation for a result. Maybe let's also change the point five to point three five, and hit run and see what the result is. So we're just going to, because, because it's an imperfect data set, that's fine. Let's just use what we have and try to produce as best of a result as we can from this data. So basically, let me remove some of these other ones. I think we'll just use this, this one here to remove these guys. Basically, there is a method of representing topography that is very effective, and that's the combination of a hillshade plus a, uh, a DEM image like this that you see on the screen here, plus contour lines. If you combine all three of those together, you, cr you can create a very easy to understand uh, image of topography that's instantly understandable. So let's try to let's try to demo that real quick. So basically, what I'm going to do is this: is I'm going to take this, uh, take this image right here, turn off these guys here. So to export images out of um, ArcGIS Pro, you need to first create a layout. So we'll do insert, the insert tab there, and then there's a, a new layout button there. If you click on that, you get a bunch of different paper sizes. So this is where you begin to like set the paper size and everything else. So if, if the expectation is that, you know, we create a 24 by 36 poster, then you choose that as your paper size. So click on that. And then we'll, right now this, this uh, paper is empty. So what you need to do is you need to add a, a map frame to it. So click on map frame. And it doesn't really matter what you choose. You can just choose, say for instance, um, since we're going to use RRT, let's click on that. And then you basically drag and click that there. Then it brings in that map frame, like so. I use a 24 by 36. It doesn't really matter what you, what you do um, for now. I'll explain the actual requirements of the assignment uh, later. But for this demo, we'll just do a 24 by 36. So with that set, you basically then basically go to the share button up there, and then there's a layout um, export layout button there. So click on that. It brings up export settings on the side here. And so anything that's a raster image, you export as a raster file format, such as a JPEG or a PNG. In this case, I'll just do a JPEG just because it's the simplest. And then you choose a location for this. So I'm just going to save it on my desktop. I'll call this one DEM. And then everything else is fine. So then just click export. And it's going to export the thing. So when it's done exporting, that's good. Uh, then we're going to export another file, which is going to be the hillshade. This one right here. So now with this turned on, let's save this as on your same same place on your desktop. We'll call this one hill shade. And then export that. And then the last thing that we're going to export is a couple of contour lines. So uh, I'm gonna do one simple quick contour export. Right now I don't have anything that I think is useful. We have these two foot contour lines, but at this scale you probably are better off using something like 10 foot. So these are a bit too detailed. So let's do a real quick contour. So I'll just go back here, type in contour, contour. And there's nothing new here. We're just going to go back to the USGS layer. I call this one contour three. 
Counter interval in this case will be 10 for 10 feet. Z factor 3.28084. Environments, processing extent will be current display extent. Then hit run. As you can see, basically I've done this so many times that for me it's, like, it's just second nature. I just, I just run through the, the steps. Hopefully by the time you practice, you will also, it will also be second nature to you guys. So this is a little bit, a little bit nicer, not as dense of a contour plan. So now this basically will go back to the layout view here and then we'll export this. So click on the export button and then we'll export this as an SVG. Um, there is no, currently in, in ArcGIS Pro, an export to Illustrator option. Um, which was something that you got in the in ArcMap for desktop, which is really nice. Unfortunately, ArcGIS Pro, whoever uh, coded this software, uh, hates Illustrator for some reason, and so they didn't add that in there. I don't know, but SVG is the closest, the closest, and you'll see why in a second. So I'll hit SVG, then just save it on your desktop. Uh, call this one Contours. And this, this, this next step is going to seem kind of dumb, but in vector resolution right here, where it says 300 DPI, I'm going to change that to 900 DPI. Um, because what, what uh, ArcMap does sometimes is it takes the vector line and it will rasterize the vector line and make it, make it a, a jagged edge. So one workaround to doing that is to increase that resolution significantly so that you don't get that result. You can even, as long as you don't have any uh, like raster images, like background images, doing this is fine because you're just going to export a vector map. So export. And then while that's exporting, I'm going to open Photoshop. This is the one time when Photoshop's okay, is to create this kind of map. Okay, so in Photoshop, I'm just going to open, open the DM. Then we're going to open, we're going to place on top of that, go to um, File, Place, Embedded, the Hillshade. That's going to drop that straight on top like that. Um, I'll just crop it because, uh, because actually I'll, I won't crop it yet. We'll do that as a last step. But basically what you do now is um, you want to just play with the different uh, overlays and filters and see if you can get a result that looks convincing. Wow. So multiply is sometimes good, but in this case, it's a bit too intense. Um, let's see another one. Soft light or overlay seem to work pretty good in this case. So let's let's do something more subtle is probably better. Um, but you kind of you can kind of begin to see like what's happening is like this is beginning to have a bit more of a a three D effect and the hill shade is supposed to be a very subtle, a very subtle addition to it. So, you know, do something really light. So like I, I'm toning down the opacity a lot um, to, to make it less, less aggressive. And then the, the DEM below, like you see here, right now it's using the, you know, the, uh, the crazy gradient. You can obviously go into hue saturation, turn down the colors slightly, maybe change the change the, the colors of it slightly to maybe be a bit more earth earth tone like this. Um, say again? A brick color? A brick color? Yeah. I mean something like that, like this is fine. You know, you can you can kind of begin to see, you know, the high points and low points. So this is kind of what you're getting. You, you start with hill shade, then you can begin to see that the the topography begins to Feel like it's coming out a bit more, uh, and then the last 
part of this is the topo lines. So we need to do a quick, a quick um, clean up of those topo lines. So we'll go to Illustrator. We're going to open that SVG, so those contours that we, we exported. So then, So just click OK. If there's anything that comes up, just click OK through it. Uh, that's a little weird. It looks like some lines didn't export. Okay, so what I did was basically uh, that didn't work, so I just exported it out as a PDF instead. Um, and so let's just place that in just to finish this tutorial. So I'll just do place embedded and then go find that file. And then when it says crop to, just crop to the art box and click OK. Uh, art box. And that just basically means like uh, use the the uh, total, yeah, clipping extents, total like um, size of the page itself. And then this, it will render it. And so what I'll just use is a quick multiply filter on top of that. So you can adjust this hill shade, maybe see if, you know, And then basically the end result is that it just creates a very easy to understand topo map that has both, you know, the, the terrain. So this is what we started with. Let's, let's imagine that these, this was the color that we had, you know, adding the contour lines on top of that gives it a little bit more depth to it. Adding a hill shade kind of like gives it a lot more definition. And so, the reason why this is not perfect is because of areas like this where the hill shade, uh, you know, went crazy. But um, if you have a good data set, like this method does give you a nice uh, clean result in the end where you have nice, clearly easy, easy, easy to read uh, map like this. So for the group that ends up doing something like topo hydrology, um, this might be one method that you use to represent that. Um, when you were in the